This is the redox titration lab video um, that will accompany the lab, and you need to complete the quiz at the end of this. For this lab, you're going to have um, the materials uh, of some glassware. There'll be a 100 milliliter beaker, a 250 milliliter beaker, a 250 Erlenmeyer flask, along with the white paper that will help you be able to see the color change, the funnel that you will put on top of the burette, and the burette is held onto the burette clamp or onto the ring clamp by burette clamp. In the hood, each of the three sections are kept separate, those lines dividing them. Please do not cross-contaminate. The graduated pipettes especially need to stay within their own sections. In the first section on the right-hand side is where you're going to start with your Erlenmeyer flask, and you're going to get 5.00 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide. It goes out to the hundredth place, so it's pretty exact. Please get exactly that. After you've put in the 5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, you're then going to add the water. And that says to add about 12 milliliters of water, I think. And uh, that's out to the ones place. It's not as significant. Uh, but after you add the water, then you're going to add the acid. And if you remember, acid to water, just like you oughta, or you might say acid into water like A&W, like A&W root beer. Anyways, you add 10 milliliters of the sulfuric acid. There's only one sig fig there, so obviously um, it's more to have an acidic environment more than the quantitative part of it. Once you have that, uh, or once somebody's getting that stuff together in the flask, someone else can be rinsing out the burette. Make sure that your burette clamp is, or the stopcock is in the off position before you add the potassium permanganate so that it doesn't leak out the bottom. You're going to add just a few milliliters because you need to rinse it out. You're going to have to do this three times. It's washing out the impurities. It's washing out any water that might be affecting your concentration. You're going to gently roll it and make sure it coats the entire inside of the, um, of the burette. And then as you can see, you're going to need to put it into the waste beaker, which is the 250 milliliter beaker and you let it go out. So uh, meanwhile, the entire time the stop clock is, the stop clock is closed. Uh, then you're going to put it back into the burette clamp, and at this point you're going to need to fill it up. Now, um, there could be a couple of you doing this, and it might make it a little bit easier. Anyways, you put the funnel in the top, and you're going to add um, well over 30 milliliters, probably all the way up to 50 if you can. It's going to go all the way up to the zero mark on the top because it of course starts at zero at the top and goes down to 50 at the bottom. So you add the, the potassium permanganate, but there has to be enough pressure or head pressure that you um, have a lot of volume in there so that it'll run out. And as you can see at the tip, there's nothing in the tip. So what you have to do is you have to evacuate the tip. You have to make sure all the air gets out and you have a nice stream going. So after you've added your potassium permanganate, Make sure that your waste beaker is underneath the burette, and then you're going to let it run for a little bit and just get out whatever's in the tip. Make sure it's all entirely purple when you're finished. So it doesn't take too much. It should go right through. Turn off. You're ready to go. Now, you could have it already set at whatever measurement. It could be at the zero or whatever your starting measurement is. You make sure you record that. Then you open up, and you can let it stream for a little while because it's going to take probably 20, 30, maybe more milliliters and uh, you start swirling it. Make observations of what's happening inside the flask as it's coming out. The swirling is a very important part of this. As you get close to the end, you're going to need to add it dropwise to, to the solution. And you can do it a couple ways. You can turn it quickly, as you noticed that I was doing before, just quick half turns. Or you can adjust it a little bit so it's one small drop at a time. Uh, maybe it's just dropping a few drops at a time, as you can see that's going on now, and just like a continuous drop. Um, the only reason I like the, the quick half turns is that you can't entirely control the small drips and you might accidentally add too much. Um, but as soon as you get to the end, you're gonna notice that you've got this faint pink color and that's the perfect pink color, hold on to that. Uh, don't forget to put all of your waste into the beaker that's in the corner of the hood.